Hey everyone, I need your attention for one minute. This is not one of those ads. This is something that has changed my entire life. If you've been listening to this podcast, you know that this is all about personal development as the foundation for everything good in your life. And this podcast is now sponsored by Growth Day, which is the world's first all-in-one personal development app. I mean, oh my gosh, can you imagine having everything all in one place that you need to create? create the life that you want, now you can. So if you've been struggling with your motivation, your mood, your productivity, or your purpose, you have to check this out. Growth Day helps you consciously change your life and achieve your potential. It has all the self-improvement tools, motivational classes, and life coaching all in one place. So many of us want to improve our lives, but the question is how? Where do we start? What do we use? How do you get unstuck? How do you make self-improvement stick? Well, research shows how. It's when you consistently journal, track your habits, set goals, learn from empowering mentors, and challenge yourself that you'll be happier, healthier, and more successful. But let me ask you something. Where do you actually do all of your personal development work? I have to tell you that over 300,000 people use Growth Day for a reason. It works. It's the world's number one software for self-improvement. Growth Day has an amazing mindset journal that I absolutely love, a habit tracker, and a goal setting system. In fact, I bet if you went to my stories this week, you probably saw me using the journaling app and telling you to do it too, because it's the first time that journaling has ever actually stuck consistently in my life because of this app. And best of all, Growth Day has live inspirational classes every single week from the world's top motivational speakers and life coaches. These are people who have impacted my life in huge ways. These are mentors who I already knew and loved. In fact, this is something that's so huge for me, you guys. I personally teach a class in Growth Day every single month, and it is one of the most fun things that I get to do, and I'd love to see you there. These classes will truly shift your life. There's always something new that you will learn. So join me in 300,000 achievers growing our lives with actual real intention. Visit growthday.com slash Lori for a free trial. Yes, you can try this for free. So go to growthday.com slash Lori and go live your best life. You guys, that's growthday.com forward slash Lori. And I can't wait to see you there. Welcome to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. I'm Lori Harder, founder of The Bliss Project, three-time fitness world champion, fitness expert, and cover model turned self-love junkie, lifestyle entrepreneur, and author. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a thought that will help you bust through your fears, connect to your soul, and get focused and clear so you can elevate your life, business, and relationships. We don't wait until we're ready for someone to tell us we're good enough. We take what we want and we anoint ourselves. Get ready to earn, own, and unapologetically rock your happiness every single day. Are you with me? Here we go. Welcome back to the Earn Your Happy Podcast. And today I have Gabrielle Bernstein on the podcast again. You guys, this is her third time on my podcast. She is one of my biggest mentors. She's writing the forward for my book right now. And if you want to know more about her, I am linking up her previous interviews on the show notes. So if you're totally intrigued by this interview and you want to know even more about her backstory, you can go there as well. And today we talk all about her Spirit Junkie Masterclass course and answer some of the most burning business and spiritual and life questions that you have about how to bust through your blocks, how to create a business that is infused with you, how to become more you, how to become unapologetic about your beliefs, how you feel, exactly who you are, and how to show up in the world as your most authentic self. And you guys, you know that she has been one of my biggest coaches, one of my biggest mentors, one of the people who has truly made me feel so 
unapologetic and so on my path and clear that I had to bring this episode to you because this is all about the course that I went through with her and I'm bringing it to you guys. So please go check out the show notes. The link to her free video training is up and also her masterclass is open for enrollment. And if you guys purchase through the link that is in the show notes, I am giving away one of the biggest things I have ever given away. You guys, this was so amazing. I did this last year and this has a $699 retail value. I am giving away a free Bliss Project ticket to my event in 2018. So March 2018. You can find out all details in the show notes. If you purchase her masterclass through my link, only through this link in the show notes, I am going to be giving you a free Bliss Project ticket to my Bliss Project three-day event, a $699 value in Newport Beach, California. So if this resonates with you and you guys are a yes for this, you will also be able to go to my in-person event where we lock every everything in, seal the deal, and you truly meet your tribe and get to work through everything in person as well, that maybe you want to connect more, you want to really just see what it feels like to create among other amazing, epic women and to truly break through and show up in this room as yourself. So if this resonates with you guys or you want more information, please go to the show notes right now and click on the link in order to see what is all included and purchase her Spirit Junkie Master Class course. So here we go. Let's get started. I know either way, if you are going to be interested in this or not, this interview is so loaded with incredible information that no matter what, you're going to get something out of it. So let's go. Gabby, I'm so excited to have you on the show again. Thank you so much for coming on. I love being on your show. So happy to be back on. Oh my gosh. This is honestly, I just keep making excuses or finding excuses to have you on. This is our third one. So so you guys, if you want to hear today, we're going to jump right into some really amazing, epic information for you guys. But if you want to hear more about her story, I'm going to put it in the show notes. You can go to either episode 38 or 66. So they're going to get just like a ton of Gabby. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) All right. So I would love, I'm so so excited that your master class is here again. You just got done with the live class, right? Yeah, the live events happened. It was amazing. And then we always launch the digital shortly after so that nobody has to have any FOMO and they can get on it. <laughs> so that's what we're going to chat about today because if you can't make it to the live event, which I got to experience myself, which Gabby, it If you guys listen to the conversations before this, and if you follow me at all or know anything about this podcast, you guys know that that was truly one of the biggest launching pads for myself and my business. It was like after that, everything changed because honestly, it's just being able to come from a place where you feel like you are owning your voice and your business. And you can really, when you do that, it is so powerful to reach people. So that in-person event was like mind blowing for me. And I've done your digital course since then too, because it's just so important, right? It's so foundational. Is that what you feel like when you created this is it was really just the foundation of what everybody needed to begin? Yeah. I I think that the, the number one element of the training that comes through for every single one of our alumni is that it's a confidence training. Mm. It's a training in accepting your mission and your purpose and your greatness. And and so that's why someone like yourself, I think, has thrived so much from this training because you were already, you, you were already ready. You believed that you had something to do. And the masterclass, I believe, really kicks people over the edge and just there's a nice little gentle kick in the ass and say, yes, it is your time to to rise up and speak up and and be unapologetic about the work that you're here to do in the world in whatever form that comes. So first and foremost, it's a it's a confidence training and a practice in clearing all the blocks 
and the fears that stand in our way from stepping into our power as as uh, as humans, as leaders, as people, as 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 entrepreneurs, as 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 as, as abundant beings in the world. And and so I'm so happy that that has had the same effect on you, mm, which I'm yes. so thrilled to see. Oh yeah, my gosh, for sure. So are there common threads that you find when people are ready to step in, or maybe they're starting to think about stepping in where spiritual people really struggle in business? What are those things that seem to hold people back? Some of the big, bu- uh, biggest business struggles are fear of financial insecurity. So I see a lot of people that come through our masterclass are in career transition. So they may be working by day as a publicist or in a some kind of day job and moonlighting as a life coach or running a podcast or doing something that they want to have as their primary career. So that fear of financial insecurity is holding them back. So belief system that how can I make money doing this healing work or how can I make money doing this insecurity? inspiration work. And so that's a big story that I hear when I see my students come through. And in the training, we bust the myth that it's that it's you know not not spiritual to make money or that you can't make money doing what inspires you. Uh, we we really clear the slate on that story. So that's a really big one. Uh, another one is people just sort of having a, a belief system of who am I to be great? Who am I to do this? Who am I to step out and have have make an impact? Have a voice? Um, cre- create a movement in whatever form that is for me. And I see that a lot. So who am I to do this is a huge one. The masterclass training helps people walk away with a new mantra, which is who am I not to? I, I, I know that you've had that experience. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like that, 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 that silly story of who am, I, who am I to do this is completely washed away through the practices and the, and the foundational work that occurs early in the training, which is a lot of spiritual work. So what's different about this training is it's equal parts spiritual and personal growth as it is also a business training. So there's there's this really beautiful element because I believe if we're going to succeed in business and if we're going to have abundance financially, we have to do the spiritual work to clear the belief systems that hold us back from our earning capacity and hold us back from stepping into our light. And that is foundational work that has to occur in order for us to really step out and, and do the things that we're here to do. Mm, I love that. So do you ever find that people you know, maybe once they first start putting themselves out there or they first start, you know, maybe making or creating a program that they might have questions in their head or these ideas that maybe making money or setting these abundant goals might not be spiritual. Like they don't know how to focus on making money while still getting their message across. Do you hear that? Oh yeah. And and I see people struggle with this all the time where they let the, the financial insecurity get in the way of the purpose of the work. So a huge message that comes through in the training and also just from me as a teacher, because this has been the belief system that I have embodied as a entrepreneur and as a spiritual teacher, which is that the more authentic I am in the truth of what I'm teaching, the more abundant I will be naturally. It doesn't have to come from a place of forcefulness. It doesn't have to come from a place of manipulation or control. It really comes naturally. So when you're in alignment with the core message and the service of the work that you're here to bring forth, then the universe provides. And that sounds like nice spiritual language, but it's truth and it is it is it is probably the most truthful statement i can say on this entire podcast which is that when you're in alignment with inspiration and joy and and excitement and enthusiasm you become a magnet for opportunities for money for clients for 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 beyond ideas and opportunities and 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 messages that come through that are beyond what you could think of with your own logical mind so I, I love that. Chris, my husband, actually just started a podcast about being unapologetic about making money. Is there something that maybe a program or something that you've done that's brought in a lot of cash flow for you? What has it allowed you to do that you would not have been able to do? Maybe get a message out there more or have a bigger reach. What are some of the major things that you have been able to do because of what you've been able to create? I think that's a beautiful question because I think a lot of people have like a lot of guilt around earning. And I had this too. I mean, I grew up without any money and my family really just taught me the belief systems of financial insecurity. So my whole story was, you know, you you can't make money. It's hard to make money. My money story was disgusting. It was horrible. (laughs) And so when I learned that I could make money, what I began to accept was that, that earning was a way of recycling 
back into the mission and the vision that I had. So I, I continued to take the, the financial abundance that I accumulated through the great work that I've been doing in the world. And I've begun to continue to put it back into the business that I'm creating and create not only opportunities to hire more people to do this work or invest in getting the message out or invest in my personal well-being, which is another huge part, which is when we accept that earning for our great work is also uh, a, a great opportunity to begin to invest in our well-being so that we can continue to do the work that we're here to do, right? So it's it's one thing to just, you know, make money and 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 work your ass off and never take care of yourself, but if you can see what you earn as currency for your health and wellness, that that is fantastic. I remember when I just stopped, got to a place where I no longer cared about how much money I spent at Whole Foods, you know? And that was a great feeling because it's like, you know, I'm putting my, my, myself first. I'm putting my well being first. I'm caring for my body and my physical presence and, and, and for the, the energy that I put out into the world. And so if you start to just change the way you perceive abundance, then abundance can flow. I totally remember having moments in the Whole Foods line and just being like, you know, I just don't want to think about how much Greek yogurt costs. Like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. I just want to s- never think about that ever again so that I yeah. can free up all of those little thoughts like that and put it just somewhere else. And that yeah. is the most freeing feeling just to have something small like that. And so many other huge things just be gone because of everything that I've learned. I still root way into all of these teachings whenever something comes up. So let, let's say I'm going to launch something really big. I can get these old stories about, you know, what is this worth or is this valuable enough? So what do you do when you are either creating a program or you're putting something out there? How would somebody who's starting know what value to place and just to feel good about it no matter what they decide? So I usually say that you'll know in your body what currency feels right to you. So it's less about logic and it's much more about intuition. I have products and courses that are range from $0 to $1,800. And it depends on the value that I perceive the, the, the course to be worth, right? Um, I also can feel really good. And this is something for anyone that's creating their own content. It's wonderful to be able to feel great that, okay, I have a book that costs $14 on Amazon and I have a meditation that I give for free. And then I have a training that I value at $1,800 because it's, so, it's you know 30 hours of content and it's being updated every year. So when you have those different levels of, of, of uh, ways that people can enter, you don't have to feel guilty about what you charge. Somebody says to you, oh, I can't afford that. You can say, well, no problem. I can give you this. Or no problem. Here's five free lessons that I have on my blog. So when you're giving a lot away, you can always feel even better about charging because you can know that if someone can't meet you where you are, if the product isn't right for them, they can still get the great benefits from your work by receiving what it is that you offer for free. And these days, any one of us can can give free content, no matter what it is that we're doing, no matter what career path we have. We can all have a blog. We can all have a social media feed. We can all have places where we deliver our products and services and messages for free in some way so that we can then value the the products that we create with currency that is aligned with what we believe they're worth. Mm. You know, and there's so much work that you do in this course before that, where you might be out of alignment somewhere, you may not understand something or something might not actually be clicking for you or have sunk in that all of a sudden you learn one thing, you know, for me, it was just really getting comfortable with my spirituality story and everything after that just kind of started clicking in for me. So I didn't even realize that, you know, this was translating throughout everything that I was doing without being clear on that. So you really go over everything. What made you put it together in steps like this? Was it something that is this, is this how you really found your path? And yes, exactly, it Laura. It's exactly right. So I started noticing so many people that were reading my books, books and coming to my lectures, waking up to their own spiritual awakening, their own uh, experience of, of, of wanting to change their lives. When they started to change the way they looked at their lives, their lives began to change. And in that shift, they started to feel awesome. They started to feel powerful, feel confident. With that confidence comes a whisper that says, it's time to share message. It's time to tell people your story. It's time to be of service in some unique way. So I noticed all these people wanting to wake up and do, do some type of uh, service-oriented work and wanting to bring their, their inspiration work to the world. 
And it was very clear to me that it was my responsibility to tell my audience members that this is how I did it so that you can, you know, avoid some of the mistakes that I made and really have a clear path on how to step in and rise up quickly mm -hmm. because we got a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. So I created this course based on the, the practices that I applied in my own life and in my own career. It's, uh, like I said, equal parts personal growth and spiritual development clearing fear, gaining confidence, stepping into the belief system that will carry you as a human and also carry you in your business and whatever that may be, whether you work for somebody else or you work for, for yourself. And then the business building tools that I've used in my career to have my message seen and heard, to make sure that I am being clear about who I'm speaking to, to create books and digital courses, and to, to really put content and messaging out into the world in a authentic, mm. genuine way. Mm. Okay, so when you're talking about that, you know, some people might be like, oh, I, I can hear it, I can feel what I'm here for, but maybe I feel like it's already been done before. And when you say putting your content out in an authentic way, what are some things that you do to either get into that space or do you try some of your free stuff out to send it out to see what the feedback is? How do you know what it is that you are wanting to put out next or what's being called to put out next? Well, let me answer this two questions here. And one's really important. The first one was a lot of people do say it's already been done, mm -hmm. right? So let's, let's, let's address that right. right now, which is my response to that is that if you have a desire to do inspiring work in some way, particularly like healing work or anything that's going to help elevate the world, you have to realize that while there may be seem to be a lot of people doing that type of work, there are far more people in need of that inspiration than there are people actually teaching it. Mm -hmm. So we need you. Just take that in, right? Let's start there. So when you can bust that myth that everybody else is doing it and accept that there's far more people that need it than there are people doing it. And, and so this is why we, that's why I created this training. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so proud that you're out there teaching people to be leaders and teaching people to speak up and, and, and do the work that they want to do because we need you. So that's, that's the first part. Uh, the second question you asked was, uh, how do they sort of test drive their material? Is that or kind what's of it? Being, what's, how do you know what's being called to come out next? Like what your, maybe what your people would love to hear from you. A lot of this has to do with you, the, how, how willing you are to tune in energetically. Mm -hmm. So the more I meditate and the more I listen to my intuition, the easier it is for me to hear what my audience wants out of me. Right. So it becomes like almost like a knock on the door. Hey, we want a book on faith right now. Or hey, I need to write a book on judgment. So I, I, I launched The Universe Has Your Back, my my most recent book, uh, about six or seven months ago. And that was very clear to me that my audience was feeling unsafe and they were looking for certainty. And it's almost like a premonition. Like it was, I wrote that book two years before we were like in this sort of shit storm that we're in now um, in terms of what's going on in the world, right? N not to take, take any like... Um, political standpoint at all, but just what's going on in the world is chaotic, right? Mm -hmm. And so I got a strong sense, okay, we are in a funky place and we're going to scarier places. I need to write a book about faith. I need to write a book called The Universe Has Your Back so that people can start to transform their fear into faith and really trust in a higher power. So that was really, really loud for me. Uh, one, logically given what was happening in the world and also just intuitively what's coming. And most recently, I just finished a book called The Judgment Detox and Judgment Detox comes out in January of 18. And I wrote that book way before there was all this divisiveness coming through. I mean, it's always been there, but now it's just in your face. So it, it became, it's almost like I have these premonitions. I, I'm just listening. So I think that, you, first of all, when you're creating something, you always have to make sure that you're inspired by it and you're excited to create it. And if you're excited about, about it, by it, then other people will be excited by it. But also just trusting that if it's coming to you and you're feeling an intuition, trust that. Trust that there is a message that's supposed to come through you and you act on it. Take, take action. Show up for it. Mm. So what is something that you wish more people would ask you? Oh, good question. I wish more people would ask me how do I be more real? Mm, that's good. So how do you do that? So for me, I know when I'm 
bullshitting. Like I know, like I can, I can feel it in my body. I'm not breathing. I'm like thinking about what someone's thinking about me. I'm jumbled, not clear headed. And I know what it feels like to be truthful. Like words come to me easily. I've been breathing easily. I'm feeling a sense of ease. So, so I know the difference between what it feels like to be out of alignment with my truth and what it feels like to be in alignment. Uh, another big thing also, you know, listen, I just did a talk a few weeks ago for Oprah's Super Soul Sessions. I and the day there. before, Sorry. I know, I would love that you were there. <laughs> it was so good that you like, I could see your little Instagrams. And, um, and I, the day before was feeling all this nervous energy. And I mean, I'm a motivational speaker. I've been a speaker for 12 years, no, longer, 15 years. So what the fuck? Why was, sorry, I'm cursing so much on your show. But why was I, why was I in that space? Why? Because I was speaking on Oprah's stage. Mm-hmm. That's, so here I am and I'm looking at my situation. And I'm like, okay, I'm making this special. Mm-hmm. And I, I had to do my work around, well, I got to get back into the truth of why I'm here, the truth of what I'm doing. This is not my authentic truth to be making someone special or to be making something separate. So I just went back into the fact that that I that I am here to be of, of service. I'm here to speak on behalf of a divine wisdom. I am here to be a conduit for a loving message. I am here to change even one person's belief system, and then I'll have done. Then I have done my job. So when I got out of my own way by realigning with the truth of what I'm here to do, I was able to let that authentic story come through and, and be real on the stage and be comfortable on the stage. And the beauty is, is as soon as I made that, that shift and, and chose, chose that, chose the authentic approach, uh, I, I came in, I was relaxed and at ease and hanging out with Oprah backstage, I was fine. You know, like I didn't think that I was in a, there was no separation. It was everybody was hanging out, you know, and I wasn't afraid to get on the stage and I just jumped out there and let it come through because I had stepped aside. So just, we got to be aware of when we're making things special and making people separate and trying to prove ourselves. And when we have that awareness, we can pray to have it be healed and removed and we can choose a different way to show up. Wow. Okay. So that just completely made me cry because because <laughs> I have a TED talk coming up and I've just been so attached to it, Gabby. And I was like, of course. And honestly, seeing you on stage was such a reminder. So, and, and that was so beautiful. You came through 100 million percent you. Like it was so felt. It was just, it was such a gift for everybody who was there. Thank so you. thank you for that. So then my message to you is yeah. the same. It's like, just like, you know, the real, the real prayer is, what would you have me say, right? The real prayer is what miracles would you have me perform today? This is not, and so when it's not about you, then your authentic truth can come forward. Oh man, I felt that like it was so much. <laughs> I just grabbed my gut and I was like, yes, okay, we're going to come from this place and I'm going to replay this right now. Yay, <laughs> good. Okay, good. I swear to God, guys, this wasn't for me today, but it just happened to be for me today. So, <laughs> all right, Gabby, so what do you feel are some of your biggest strengths that you love to teach people? So I love, love, love teaching confidence. I want to write a book about confidence. People think that confidence is like on a business card or confidence is like how well I can dress or how I can walk into a room. F all that stuff. (laughs) It is confidence is your capacity to be real. And true success is, is completely a direct reflection of your level of confidence. And, and so, you know, it's interesting. I was just talking to a friend of mine who's a massive celebrity and, and, and he was telling me all about how he, you know, did this interview and he was being real and authentic and he was so uncomfortable in that authenticity. And I said to him, I was like, honey, that authenticity is what the world wants from you. That is when you're being truly confident. So it's like he, he, he had this old belief system that confidence means I'm perfect. Confidence means I don't, don't, don't uh, expose my underbelly, right? But actually, it's quite the opposite. True confidence comes when you're willing to expose your underbelly, when you're willing to be authentic, when you're willing to be real. So that is something that I just feel so uh, proud to teach. And it's something that we are not taught to build. It's, it, it, we're taught it in a different way. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I want to, you know, I'm definitely going to write a book about confidence and success being an inside job. Um, mm-hmm. And then I think the other, the other thing I, I, I love to teach is, is public speaking, something that comes through big time in the master class. 
It's teaching people how to craft an inspirational story. We all have a story and our stories are what make us experts in the worlds that we live in because we've been through it and our stories are what heal. So it's a huge part of my work to, to, to help people learn how to tell their stories. Mm. There's so much freedom in what you say because all of, I mean, that's really what I got out of it when I left. And it's just, honestly, that's how you feel. You feel free. You almost mm. feel like you, you walk in a completely different person and you walk out somebody who's like, did, did those things really matter before? And it's not that they don't come back because they can, but you just get these really incredible tools. And I still have, I literally have my handbook with me, like right next to me. It's still here. Like I refer to it. So it's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do with, because when you're really out there, I mean, of course you're going to, you're going to get positive feedback and you're going to get negative feedback. How do you handle um, either energetically or just your mindset when you get negative feedback from people, whether it's on a course that you put out or anything online? So, you know, I always, if I get something negative, I, I ask myself, is this true to me? Mm. And if it is, then I take it as an opportunity to change things or I take it as an opportunity to adjust something or do it differently next time. If it's not true to me, I say, you know, thank you for sharing and I forgive and delete because it's, you know, people want to project their stories onto you. And so you can't, take all those stories on. Sometimes those stories are wonderful guidance to look more closely at what your shadows are doing, but sometimes they're just people's crazy projections. And so if it doesn't feel true, then let it go, move on. Mm, that's so great. Literally, it was two minutes before I got on this podcast and I had this email pop up with this really negative headline and I was like, oh, I'm going to, we're just going to let that go and forgive it. Yeah. And I'm going to read that later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and really check in with yourself. Like, like, is this true for me? Because remember, like the more you put yourself out there, the more that challenges people. Mm. And so, you know, the other nice thing too, is, as you start to create a team of people that work for you, they can filter some of that crap. So you don't have to see it, you know? And so a lot of stuff that comes through, I don't even know it's there. Yeah. Isn't that great? It is good. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That was one thing I looked forward to. I'm like, I can't wait to have a team so I can have somebody do my customer service. And I'm like, wow, that's another reason, you guys, why you need to yes. free yourself up to make more money yes. is to have those so that you can be totally in your space yes. of creating and serving at a way higher level. Because when, I mean, I'm sure in the beginning you did some of your customer service too. And it's like energetically, you're just, you don't have a whole lot of time for, or, you know, emotion for other yeah. things when you're doing that. So yeah. That yeah. is huge. So do you still get blocked? And if you do, what do you do? Of course. I, I definitely get blocked. I often will physically move when I feel blocked, mm -hmm. physically move. I will amp up my meditation practice. I will do less because one of the big things that blocks me is this thing, this belief that I should multitask, which mm -hmm. is insane. Oh so I, I stop multitasking and I start doing less. And I like I'm blocked right now. I'm trying to find a subtitle. So I, I, I canceled this video shoot literally just so I could spend the next week figuring out my subtitle. Mm. Like, like I was like, I'm not going to clutter my mind with other things when I really need to let this thing come through me. Right. So, uh, I think sometimes clearing the space for, for the, for clarity to come through. Needed that one too today. Okay, yeah. thanks. <laughs> so what are some of your favorite uh, success stories that have come out of your master class? Oh my God, there's so many. Oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> so, okay, we've got one, which is Danielle, Danielle Mercurio. She, her story is she went from, from corporate to coach in eight months wow. after joining the master class. She was in her corporate career trying to transition to become a life coach over three years of trying to coach. She only had like maybe two or three clients over that three year period. Uh, came to master class, accepted the invitation to show up and go big, you know. Yeah. Um, took maybe another six months or eight, took eight months of a transition, which really is quite fast, really. It's less mm -hmm. than the time it takes to pick a baby. And <laughs> in that eight months, she started to do work on the side. She listened to my advice, which was she used the money that she was making in her corporate job to fuel and, and fund the new business she was building and built the business on the side uh, after within eight months after masterclass. And then eight months later was a full-time life coach, speaker, and uh, just personal growth guru, yoga teacher. This is her full career now. And she's uh, a miracle. She's amazing. Wow. Uh, yeah, that was a big one. Mm -hmm. 
Another one is a woman named Susie Draper, who I love. And this is a archetype of a woman that often comes to masterclass is somebody that's coming because they've had their spiritual awakening. They know that they, they've had a spiritual awakening or a moment of personal growth that has moved them and a, and a belief that like, oh, you know what, maybe I'm supposed to do something with this, but I don't know what it is. And they're in a job that they like, but it's not really the most fulfilling thing. But they're like, there's something more here. And so they end up in the masterclass training and they're like, why did I end up here? They don't even know why. But then once they take it, they're like, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to do. And Susie uh, started bringing in spiritual principles into her existing career. And she's working in a high fashion magazine. She started like doing tarot cards in the, in the, you know, during the lunch breaks and like coaching her cl- colleagues. And within two years of, of sort of bringing it into her existing space and trying to just sort of decide what is, uh, what is it I'm supposed to be doing, it became very clear to her that she was actually meant to step out and, and do this on her own. Mm-hmm. So she's now on her own completely, fully, self, fully sufficient and supported financially through the work that she's doing today. So that was an interesting, nice transitional story as well. And, and then there's folks like you, Lori, that come, they're very successful, they've got, a, they've got a clear vision of what they're here to do, they're doing it, and they lead masterclass and they just up-level, they just go to the next level. Mm-hmm. And also just to what your point was earlier, just start to accept that, 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 there's, that there's even a deeper level of authentic truth that's meant to come through mm-hmm. and becoming unapologetic about sharing those stories. Mm-hmm. Mm, I love that. And you know, that's exactly what it just gave it richness. It just gave me like Like, such deep roots that it's, it it was just felt so solid to me. So I think that's what a lot of people are missing is they have this idea. They have this thing they want to put out there, but they still have this question mark in the back of their head where that is so gone. Like it doesn't even exist anymore. It's such a truth in my whole body. It's a whole body. Yes. So that was super powerful for me. So on tribe, because I want to talk about just, it's not just the, you know, the course of the masterclass. It's like you are tapping in to this beautiful tribe of women that I guess that's also what made the question mark go away is all of a sudden you're with these people and you're in this room and you're hearing this truth and it's just hitting your soul. And it's like, oh my God, like having all of these incredible people around you, what role does tribe play in your life and in this masterclass? Well, it's major for whether you join live or you come to the digital. It's like a huge part of what we offer right away. Second, you sign up for the digital is, is a, a Facebook group that's been growing over year after year. And it's a family. What happens is, is that the community is so loving, so warm. It's one of the nicest communities on the internet. And this community just opens the door wide. Second, you're in, in, in the tribe, you are in the family. The relationships that have spawned from this training have become business partnerships and best friendships and lifelong connections. I think the feedback we see from every single one of our alumni who give testimonials all share that one of the most amazing parts of it is the community. What that means to me is that I was honest on this path way before it was kind of hip to be on this path. Mm-hmm. And I really just wanted to create community. And that's a big reason why I started speaking about it. It's just to get people in a room talking about what I believe to be true and what they believe to be true. Mm -hmm. So how does being spiritual, how does really finding your voice, um, you know, and, and finding your own, whatever you want to call it, your own spiritual story, your own spiritual journey, and, and really wrapping that into what you do, how does that help you thrive in business? It's everything. It's everything. It, when you have that, when you have that foundation, as I referred to it earlier, you gain the confidence, you clear the blocks, you align your energy with inspiration. And when you're in that space, you're in a place of, with, of no resistance. Of, when you're in an absence of resistance, you become a super attractor. You become, your energy's free. You have a good vibe. And the world reflects that back to you. Trust me when I tell you that the, the, your, your, your most valuable currency is your energy. So if your energy isn't clear and joyful and inspirational, then you won't be a magnet for more of that. I can't even tell you how much the, like the more that I, you know, cause every year we have a whole new kind of set of things that we're working on in our life. And the more that I've been able to let go, let go, let go, let go, let go of these thoughts that I thought that I needed to be and just really work on faith and love and being and just feeling and listening. It's, it's amazing how much less you have to do. <laughs> It's like yeah. things really co- do come to you. I can't even, the last six months I've been like, they really 
do come to you. They yeah. just keep yeah. coming. And they keep coming at such a fast pace. You're almost like, okay, um, how do I turn this magnet down just a little? <laughs> but it's People so, don't get it. So they don't good. get that, like, you know, the less the less you, you do sometimes, the more powerful you are. And, mm. and listen, that goes differently for everybody. Some people are real action takers like you and me, and so we need to tone it down. And some people are just sitting on their ass and they're just not taking action, so they need to amp it up. So there, there's different there's different places from for, for different people. But there is something about to be said for living in joy and inspiration and letting things show up in your life. Mm. So Gabby, there's so much, I mean, I could keep you on here all day and I'm going to wrap this up in a bit, but what is something that you would like people to know about this course? What is something you really want people to take home? If you have a sense, like if you're feeling the call, like I have I have a story to tell. I have a message to share. I, I want to. I want my my life to feel more inspirational. I want to feel more aligned, and I want to be able to be unapologetic about earning for that great message and that work. If that's if there's a hit of any kind behind that, then then it's a yes because I have so many people that land there not even knowing why. They just hear that little whisper and they say yes, and it becomes this pivotal turning point in their life. I am deeply, deeply proud of this training. It's the best use of me as a teacher and a person, and it's my greatest contribution to the world. So I feel so honored to invite people on that journey and to invite people into our tribe, into our family. And I, I'm so grateful that I've allowed this to come through and that we as a community of, of the, the alumni have created such a powerful movement with the work. So powerful. So you guys, there is a three video training series that she has coming out. And the first video, I'm just going to go over the titles quick. Uh, the three steps to own your confidence and get into action. Video two is going to be the three major blocks to your abundance and how to fix them. And video three is the number one way to stand out and make an impact doing what you love. So that is going to be at lauriharder.com forward slash Gabby that you can get all of that good stuff. And you guys, I literally just started um, with Gabby's, uh, free videos and her lectures at first. And then it was like, I was completely, I learned so much and applied so much that taking the masterclass is what really pushed everything over the edge for me and completely launched my career in a different way. Um, in such an empowering, beautiful, authentic way where I was excited to wake up and I was being pulled toward what it was I was supposed to be doing. And that to me was just, it was like, it was completely life-giving. So Gabby, I just want to thank you for, I mean, more than I could probably ever say on this podcast. So just thank you for how you show up every single day because you are a fierce warrior of just your own self-work and connecting, um, you know, to, to the thing that is driving you. So thank you for that. Right back at you, mama. <laughs> right back at you. I am so proud to be your friend and so moved by what you do. Right back mm -hmm. at you. Thank you so much. And you guys, if you loved this episode as much as I did, make sure you share it with your friends and make sure you go check out this link because there are some crazy, amazing offers for you there. And we cannot wait to see what you're about to do in the world. So until then, earn your happy. Bye everyone. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. I am so glad that you stopped by. If you could take one second to share this episode with someone you think would love it, that would be absolutely amazing and we would be forever grateful. Also, please leave us a review if you feel so moved by going to iTunes and leaving us an honest thought, an honest comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear more of. It would really help us out on our journey to helping thousands and thousands of people. Until then, don't forget to earn your happy. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye. Hey all, I'm so excited to share with you, Earn Your Happy is now part of Growth Day Podcast Network. A bunch of us are coming together to bring more growth to the world and support shows and brands that we truly believe in. And one of my friends is also on the network and I'd love for you to go subscribe to his show. You guys, Trent Shelton has the most incredible podcast. It's called Straight Up With Trent Shelton and it's going to remind you that you are built for this. I have heard Trent speak in person multiple times. I've listened to his podcast a ton. He's coming on the show and I literally cannot wait because this man just spits straight 
fire. It is like truth that goes to your core and makes you take action right away. If you want one of those podcasts that when you're just out on a walk, you can't help but want to start running and run through a wall in your life, this is the show to go listen to. So you guys make sure that you go subscribe to the show straight up with Trent Shelton. You're going to love it. Want to know a huge secret to my success? Okay, not only my success, but just about every single person that I have interviewed on this podcast who is successful has this in common. You guys, they love to journal. They capture their life lessons and what they're grateful for. But a lot of people don't keep this up consistently. And most people do know that the research shows that journaling deepens your gratitude and increases self-awareness. But did you also know that journaling decreases stress and helps you achieve your goals faster? In fact, journaling is a huge differentiator between average performers at work and high performing people. It leads to longer term clarity, confidence, and success. So why don't more people journal? Why didn't I journal consistently? Honestly, they don't like staring at a blank page. It's hard to carry a book around with you or a notepad, and they just don't even know what to write about or they just forget. That's why I know that you're going to love Growth Day. It's the world's number one system for self-improvement, and it's like all-in-one personal development in an app. And it has an awesome digital journal, and people love it. Growth Day's digital journal has hundreds of research-backed writing prompts for self-reflection, positive mindset, confidence building, and success. I use them all the time, and it makes me think in ways that I typically don't, and it makes me ask myself better questions, which we all know gets better results in our life. It even has prompts that help you develop a daily, weekly, or monthly habit of reflecting on your life and identifying areas to grow. So it's a perfect time of year to start journaling, you guys. When you sign up at Growth Day, you also get systems for habit tracking, goal setting, and scoring and improving every area of your life. Best of all, I get to teach there too, you guys. I'm so excited. I hope that I get to see you. I teach live in Growth Day every single month with a new topic just for you. So join me there. Start your free trial at growthdate.com slash Lori. Hey, thanks for listening to the podcast. And I want to make sure that you have my phone number and I'm not kidding. Did you know that I have a community text number for real? My phone number is 310-496-8363. This goes directly to my phone. All you have to do is text the word daily to 310-496-8363. And I literally text you every single day, Monday through Friday. I actually just got done 30 seconds ago texting a bunch of people back. And I talk to you all of the time. You guys, people always ask me how I got my community text number and how it works. Well, all you have to do is you can just go to community.com and get your own. Community makes it easy to get a phone number that you can use to build your audience using text. People just text you at your number and they're added to your group. Then you can text them out audios, video links, anything you want. You guys, I text out happy birthday videos. I love to send podcast links, thoughts about life, book recommendations, uh, different events that I'm doing in the local area. Texting gets me out of the noise of social media and directly into your hand. And now you can start texting your people too. Just go to community.com to get your phone number. They give you a 10 digit real phone number, not those weird short codes that look like spam, but it's more than a phone number. Your new number comes with an inbox for SMS and texting. This means you can actually manage your text list from your computer and an app on your phone. You can schedule texts to send at certain times and to certain groups. You can even set up auto replies or let your assistant or customer service team answer your text messages via community's awesome dashboard. Just go to community.com and ask for a free demo. They'll show you how it works and get you your number. It's time to start texting your audience versus just posting on social media. Everyone uses community for that. So go check them out at community.com. I can tell you it's not just great for communicating with my audience, but Chris and I use community and our texts to also 
sell out our launches. I'm telling you, you get such an incredible response because you really are creating a true deep sense of community and it's so intimate. It's freaking amazing. Go check it out at community.com. Oh,